Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for part 2 of the full stack Apollo GraphQL with React and Node tutorial. In the last part we set up an Apollo server and uh, hopefully uh, you have got your Apollo server up and running. And in this part we're going to explore uh, just briefly the GraphQL playground. So go ahead and start up your server. And when you do that, you should get a link to localhost 4000. Hold down Alt and left click it one time, and that'll bring up a GraphQL playground in your, in your browser. And on the right hand side, you'll see that there are two tabs, one schema and one called docs. All right, so if we click on our schema, we see all of our type definitions. We've got our mutation type, our quake type, query type, record update response type, and our user type, which we all um, defined in our schema before. Remember, here's where we define them in our type defs. So that's interesting. Basically, from the browser, we can see inside of our GraphQL server, and we can explore our schema. So that gives you the sense that what the GraphQL Playground is, is it's sort of a proxy front-end interface that allows you to um, kind of work with client-side, um, what you're going to be able to see from the client-side before you actually ever hook up the, um, the client-side to your, your application. Uh, we can't yet make any uh, queries or mutations because we haven't written our resolvers and we'll do that uh, in we'll have to do that after we actually hook up our data sources but for now at least we can see our schema and from the browser and we can also explore our queries and mutations for example we wrote a quakes query that would return a list of quakes and we also um, defined what type of data that we wanted to get back in that list. Of course our response from the US Geological Survey was going to be a large one with a lot of information we just didn't want. So we customized our response so that we would have the quake ID, its location, its magnitude, a descriptive string of when and what time it happened, and then also we were going to get back a timestamp that we could use for cursor-based pagination later. Also if you remember that we, um, we had a query that let us uh, look at get information about the current user and one thing I'd like you to look at here is that uh, if you recall by putting an exclamation point here uh, you know in, in these fields we made these fields required which means in GraphQL terms non-nullable so in that way if you get a null response back you're going to get an error and uh, we don't I mean that's fine for the username that's fine for email and password but for this list of records that we would attach to a user profile. Remember, we were going to allow the user to take quakes that were particularly interesting to them and add them to a list of records that were attached to their uh, profile. To make that non-nullable, which means required, doesn't seem to be a good way to go. So if you go to your schema file and you go to your user type and just get rid of that exclamation point, now we can uh, have it be nullable and that's, uh, I think, a better way to go. So, uh, you know, take some time and explore the uh, GraphQL Playground on your own. And I hope you see that uh, it's a very powerful tool that will allow you to examine what's going to happen on the client side long before you actually ever hook up the client side to your, your application. So in the next part, we're going to go ahead and hook up our data sources. And I hope to see you then. And thanks as always for joining me. Cheers.